President Biden throwing a tone-deaf party for the ages. On the same day the stock market had its worst day since June 2020, thanks to a worse-than-expected inflation report, Biden and Democrats thought it would be appropriate to hold a massive White House event to celebrate the passage of his so-called Inflation Reduction Act, which actually does nothing to solve the problem. Biden bringing 2,000 of his closest friends to the South Lawn, including a soothing performance by James Taylor. And how about James Taylor, a voice that heals our soul and unites the nation and a good friend. Exactly four weeks ago today, I signed the Inflation Reduction Act into law, a single most important legislation passed in the Congress to combat inflation. The soul of America is vibrant. The future of America is bright. And the promise of America is real. This bill cut costs for families, help reduce inflation at the kitchen table. But it didn't. Prices of food spiked to their highest margins in more than four decades. And Biden's tone-deaf event wouldn't be complete without the inaccurate ramblings of good old Chuck and Nancy. Whoa! Look at this crowd. So... This is a great and celebratory day. Inflation Reduction Act, so beautifully named for all that it does. Your extraordinary leadership has made this glorious day possible. I, that's an applause line. <laughs> You know, Greg, inflation rose higher than expected in August, keeping prices painful uh, for all Americans. And yet, uh, it was higher, in fact, than predicted. And yet, they're over there celebrating. What are they celebrating about? I don't know. It's like uh, underwear at a flea market. I'm not buying it. <laughs> James Taylor again? What yeah. are we, why are we torturing people? They did this to the, to the French after a terrorist attack. I mean, come on. At least get somebody listenable. I could make some suggestions, maybe the Melvins, Stop. Slayer, <laughs> Misfits, something good. Slayer. I'm pleading with Republicans, you got to get your act together. You're never going to get an opportunity like this. This is like the inmates are running the asylum. Nothing they say is true. It's just like if you can't if you can't beat these guys, then you don't deserve to win. And it's sad. I go back to that rule. You bet on the person who wants it more. And sometimes it feels like the Democrats just want this stuff more because they're just more ruthless. I mean, they're calling half of America terrorists. That means you came to play, right? They're making it so that if you decide to challenge them on anything, you're considered unpatriotic. So uh, I, would I, I, and, and I would love to see the Republicans kind of get as nasty as they are. Uh, and if you look at what the Dems are doing, which is elevating, you know, the far right candidates, again, it reminds you that politics, that's the Democrats' line of work. It's full time. I mean, for Republicans, it used to be, you know, politics is something you do while running your business. But the Dems, politics is their business, and that's why they're better at it. It's just like, I'm very sanguine. Is that the word? Sanguine. I learned that yesterday. Yes. I, don't, I, I feel like, you know, the, that the Dems are now stepping it up, and the Republicans are on their back foot. You know, Jesse, meanwhile, it's this schizophrenic, what, what Greg is talking about, is this schizophrenic approach where they're putting all this money into the right-wing candidates that are running against a Democrat candidate, and yet they're trashing the right-wing candidate. What is the, what is the agenda here? Well, they're trying to win those Senate races with that, but permission to make an analogy, Judge? Yes. This would be like your wife leaving you at the altar and then just being like, you know what? Let's go dancing and cut some cake, right? This would be like Hillary Clinton on the night of the 2016 election <laughs> firing off the fireworks because they were already paid for. Real people see a number drop like this and they cancel the party. But politicians can't do that because the media covers everything they do. Because the media would then say, Biden cancels Inflation Reduction Act party after inflation soars. So instead, they have to pretend like everything is normal. And that's why this country is looking at it like they're crazy, because you're in a recession. The Dow just dropped 1,000 points. But it doesn't matter if you live in fantasy land, Judge. You know, it doesn't matter. 
You, 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 you can say that the Inflation Reduction Act reduces inflation by spending a trillion dollars. You can say we're not in a recession. You can say whatever you want. It gives me these vibes about Putin. You remember, did you hear yesterday? They just lost a ton of territory in northeast yeah. Ukraine. What yeah. was Vlad doing? He was at an unveiling of a Ferris wheel. It's like nothing matters if you just pretend like everything is fine. And until today, I thought the Republicans were going to lose the Senate. Not anymore. With this inflation number that hits and these Senate candidates that are falling apart and all the money the Republicans are injecting into these races, I'm a little more confident now. Except... Lindsey Graham comes out today oh. and talks oh. about abortion. You stole my Everybody talking. else is talking yeah. about inflation. Okay. Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about the fact, Dana, that, you know, we've got these Democrat Senate candidates, whether it's Fetterman, who was refusing in Pennsylvania to debate Oz, or Mark Kelly, who fumbled the other day, yesterday, I believe, and he couldn't give any kind of a comment on whether or not Joe Biden's doing a good job, and he says, I don't write report cards. We have that sound. Let's take a listen. Has he done a good job, do you think? Hey, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, first of all, it's not my job to give him a report card. I would say, you know, mixed reviews. So if he came out here, held an event, uh, you'd, you'd attend that event. Oh, you'd I, like that. You'd I like certainly, that. I would certainly consider it. Consider is not. I would, <laughs> well, I would look at it. <laughs> yeah, he was fumbling right there, and that's his party. Yeah. So when we got this, how come the Republicans aren't jumping all over this? Well, I think that they are. So I'm going to give you some good news so you don't have to be sanguine mm. anymore. So uh, last Tuesday, when we came back from Labor Day, it did feel like the Democrats had the wind behind their back, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, they're doing great. But by Friday, all these other polls had come out and like, oh, actually, the Republicans are hanging in there pretty well. They, are, they have less money than the Democrats, and yet they are still able to hold really steady. People don't really focus until after Labor Day. Mm. And then the, the White House... You schedule events based on or, or, the calendar. You look and think, oh, okay, well, the jobs number is coming out that day. They didn't know what the inflation number was going to be, but why do they schedule the Inflation Reduction Act on the same day the inflation is coming right. out? That makes them look ridiculous. And everybody that's out there, a, a great event, lots of fun, beautiful in September. A lot of those are staffers. Okay, that's not Americans that are dealing with this or looking at their 401k. And here you have the White House. This juxtaposition is really strange. They're popping champagne for a bill that will take working people's money and give it to rich people so that they can buy electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And then there's the student loan debt. We know how that is going. And a lot of these races are, are tightening and people are forgetting. Remember what happened in New Jersey? There wasn't a single poll in all of New Jersey. And that Republican came this close right. to winning. Jack. And that hasn't changed. Um, Think about Youngkin. Think about education. Crime is a big issue. The border is a big issue. And this, you have the Democrats saying maybe our polls are not as good as we think they are because they're oversampling Democrats. So I'm not saying that the Republicans are going to run away with it, but I do believe they are in better shape than we thought a week ago. Mm, I feel less sanguine. Well, yeah. well it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Jessica, the truth is that the Dems seemed, as, as uh, Dana said, they seemed to be in good shape. They had a good summer. They had a legislative success. But the truth is that, you know, the, the inflation is five times higher the, the, since, when, since Biden took office. Prices of food is not going down, even though the price of gas is going down. So how do, how do they play this going into November? Well, I think the optics of today were absolutely abominable. And I feel very bad for Senator Joe Manchin, who's going to be on with Brett after we get off air. <laughs> and he wants to talk about this act, which he supported. And they had to work really hard to get him on board with it. And then he's going to have to talk about, you know, the Dow ticker mm -hmm. versus the president talking about this. So I would have rescheduled, especially since it was majority staffers. And, you know, Thursday might have been a better day mm -hmm. for this. Uh, the, race, the races were always going to tighten. That's just what happens. People wake up, they start paying attention. And I know, Dana, you saw the piece in the New York Times as well. Nate Cohn, one of the pollsters, did an evaluation of the races based on the uh, the mistakes that were made in 2020. Mm -hmm. So where Wisconsin was supposed to be a win by like eight points and it ended up being one point. And when he redid the tables, the Dems pick up one seat. It was the Fetterman seat and all of this. And that's still a pickup. I would be plenty happy if we ended up with one extra seat. I would be overjoyed if we ended up with a couple more. And I think it is feasible somewhere like Ohio, for instance. Um, but when you see some of these results that Mandela Barnes is up nine points, for instance, over Ron Johnson, I don't believe that. I think it's going to be a really close mm -hmm. race. 
Um, I will say to Jesse's point about Lindsey Graham just, I guess, waking oh. up and saying, oh, I, I should go out by myself and say we're going to have a, a national abortion ban. When I actually saw it previewed last night on Twitter, I thought, oh, no, this is going to be terrible because he'll be helping out women in these states with these highly restrictive bans. But no, it's even worse than that. The highly restrictive states get to keep their policies, and he's just going after blue states or people with more lenient policies. And there's been reporting after reporting about the spike in women that are registering, how angry they are, and that's Democrats, independent women, and Republican women. And Mitch McConnell's face said it all when he got asked about it, and he was like, uh, but that's all we think it should be. Yeah, yeah, he looks that's like sure. that. But can I say, Lindsey Graham didn't go alone. He did have Marjorie Denfensler, with, who is he, the head of the Susan B. Anthony list, Marjorie. who but wanted. But he, he doesn't have the votes behind him. I mean, okay, sure, that's fine. But he has, he has introduced this very bill every year for 20 but years. But it used to be a 20 weeks, and now he's gone to 15. Well, also, 15 weeks I don't want to hear about. Yeah. I understand. Weeks. But I don't want to hear from a man about abortion. I certainly don't want to hear from a man who hasn't had kids about abortion. He should never have done this. So we, men have no opinion on abortion. Okay, you have no opinion on, can we pick something? Vasectomies. There you go. Yeah. How about war? You, you, do you have you. no opinion on war. Because <laughs> right, we guys. send boys off to war for Ladies generations. Ladies go now and they do I a think great job. Can have you know what I mean. You, no, and you know what I mean. No, but I know what I mean. But okay. I know more than you know. Get the last word. All right. <laughs> He'll laugh Sandwich. anyway. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.